Hi everyone, this is Esther from SHIP staff and we are going to give folks a few minutes to join here um, and we'll get started promptly at 8.05. Before we get started here, if somebody could confirm in the chat that you can see my screen and that you can hear my voice, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Okay, everybody, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. 
Good evening, SHIP Familia, and welcome to the 2020 Scholarship Webinar Series. We are so excited to launch this webinar series as we get ready to open our scholarship application this February 1st. So our applications will open February 1st. The purpose of this first webinar is to give you an overview of our scholarship program so you have all the information you need to apply to our scholarships and share them with others. While we can't cover every last detail, you should have the information you need to get started and know where to ask questions should they arise. Remember, we are here to support you. Before we get started, some housekeeping. If you have any questions for SHIP, please feel free to send them through the Ask a Question box. I'll be answering questions at the end of the session if time permits. If I don't get to your question during today's webinar because we run out of time, don't worry. A script with all questions and answers will be posted on our webpage after this webinar has concluded. The PowerPoint deck will be available as well. And lastly, I'd like to encourage you to share today's webinar with your social networks, including but not limited to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. We want to ensure that everyone has an opportunity to apply to our scholarship program. So let's get started. Some information about me. Uh, I'm Esther Gonzalez and I'm your speaker for today. I am also the scholarship program manager, so I am your go-to person should you have any questions or concerns regarding scholarships. Uh, my email, which is not listed on the slide, is my first name, E-S-T-H-E-R, my last initial, D, at shpe.org. Again, that's Esther G at shpe.org. Um, I've been on the SHIP staff since 2016, and I am super passionate about diversity and inclusion. So passionate, in fact, that I have um, began my pursuit of a PhD around this topic, specifically as it relates um, to the STEM industry. And a fun fact is that I have attended over four national conventions and over uh, 10 RLDCs. So I hope to see any and all of you at one of these events. This is our agenda for today. We will be covering the following. Uh, first, what the scholarship program is, what our opportunities are for 2020, our scholarship requirements, our timeline for applying to scholarships, how to sign up for membership if you haven't already, how to apply for scholarships, what the review process looks like, how you will be notified about your scholarship application status, what the next steps are if you are selected, and how you can give back to future SHIP scholars. So what is the scholarship program? Our scholarship program is addressing the underrepresentation of Hispanic and Latinx students in STEM education and industry. Uh, we have found um, through various research sources that financial need is the number one roadblock for our community students persisting to graduation, and we wanna change that. So our solution is to provide as much financial assistance to as many students as we can while advocating for representation with our university and industry partners. Before we dive deeper into um, our webinar, we do have a question for you. And the question is, for how many of you is 2020 your first time applying to scholarships? So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this question that you should be able to answer. And I'll give everyone uh, 30 seconds to a minute here to answer. And I'm going to close this poll here in five, four, three, two, and one. Uh, so this is great news. It looks like over 80% uh, of you, this will be your first time applying to scholarships. Um, so I'm glad that we have the opportunity to launch this webinar series for all of our um, all of our members and potential applicants. So hopefully you'll have all the information that you need and feel confident in applying this year.
So our scholarships are funded by three types of sources. We have those that are funded by SHIP directly that account for over 100 awards and $200,000. Those funded by our corporate sponsors that this year will account for over 75 recipients and over $300,000. And we are especially excited this year because Intel has pledged $200,000 and has a majority contribution um, to graduate students who are previously not the focus of corporate dollars. And we have those funded by individual donors that account for over 10 recipients and over $25,000. We are grateful for all of our donors, regardless of contribution amount, because even one scholarship in any amount can make a difference in a student's life. And I want to emphasize to all of you that everyone here, including SHIP, our corporate sponsors, and our individual donors value you as a member of the STEM academic and professional community. And we believe that Hispanic and Latinx representation in STEM is important. So next I'm gonna launch a second poll here um, because I wanna understand what demographic is here on this webinar. So if you could please answer the question about your academic or professional level. Five more seconds here. Three, two, one, and I'm closing the poll. So it looks like we have a mix of undergraduate, graduate, and professional members um, here with us today. And the majority are undergraduate at 68%, graduate at 23%, and 9% professional. And uh, the great thing is that we have five types of ship funded scholarships. Um, and they are separated by your current academic or professional status. We have the graduating high school senior scholarship. So this is for current high school seniors that will be graduating this May and will be undergraduate freshmen this fall. Undergraduate scholarships is for sophomores and above. Professional for those um, who are full-time working professionals and are pursuing graduate school at a part -time, on a part-time status. Graduate is for full-time graduate students, and the dissertation scholarship are for full-time PhD students. So the scholarship requirements for um, the SHIP-funded scholarships are first and foremost, um, that you must be an active SHIP member, and we'll talk about how you can sign up for membership in a minute. Um, full-time student pursuing a STEM degree except for professionals where half-time status is required um, and that's what I spoke to earlier if you're a professional who's at least going to school part-time then, then you do qualify for the professional um, scholarship and a minimum 2.75 uh, GPA and I do want to emphasize this last point for our ship funded scholarship Citizenship is not a requirement. So that's a question that we receive a lot via email, by phone. Um, we do have scholarships that are available to those SHIP members that are not, um, that do not have formal citizenship. For our corporate funded scholarships, um, the requirements vary. And when you access the application, you will see what the exact requirements are for the scholarship which you are applying to. Um, the first, uh, but the SHIP membership is still an act, um, a, re a requirement of all of our scholarships, regardless of how they are funded. Um, you must be a full-time student pursuing a STEM degree. Um, minimum GPA varies depending on the corporate sponsor and the GPA level that they set. Um, and citizenship requirements do vary because some of our corporate funded SHIP scholarships do require citizenship. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about how to become a SHIP member if you are not a member already. And so I have my last question here. So I can tailor my conversation and I would like to ask you if you are an active SHIP member. So 
So it looks like the majority of you, about 90% are um, our ship members. Um, but for clarification, I will run through this information um, because we do have some members that have signed up with their chapter or at their school but are not on our online membership system. So you do have to register with SHIP National via our website so that you can have access to apply to our scholarships. Um, and for that reason, I wanted to highlight these folks on the screen. Um, so the first person that you see on the right side of your screen is Brianne Martin. She's our Senior Manager of Membership Relations. She's a SHIP Lifetime member, um, and she is passionate about all things related to SHIP and making sure that um, our members have everything that, that you need and that we continue to service um, the needs of our members. Uh, Alexis Mandrana on the right um, is our Membership Development Coordinator. And he has um, also been working in the membership department for a few years now. Um, and he supports uh, Brianne and our membership team with a lot of um, the logistical questions that you may have about if your membership is active, if you're having any trouble with payments or um, renewing your membership. Uh, he is also a great resource as well. Um, they are the primary liaison with you as members. They provide customer service. So if you have any questions regarding SHIP or your membership um, outside of the scholarship program, they are your go-to. Um, they provide officer training and coaching for our chapters. Um, and they've been working really hard at developing some new member tools to edu really educate our membership on all the resources that SHIP has to offer you. So they are there as a resource should you need them. So that we can ensure that you are actually um, a member, I wanted to include how you would become a member. Um, so this is our homepage, ship.org. On the upper right-hand corner, there's a button there called uh, that says join. And that is what you would click to access our membership portal where you sign up. And then that would lead you to this screen here. And there is a link that says join membership. And you can go ahead and register and sign up for your membership there. Um, again, if you have any questions, sometimes this site can be a little buggy. Uh, please make sure that you email us. Um, there is a alias membership. That's M-E-M-B-E-R-S-H-I-P at ship.org and if you email us we can make sure that we can walk you through and ensure that you have an active membership i can't emphasize this enough um, we are requiring membership for all of our scholarship programs so your membership must be active as far as benefits of membership outside of our scholarship offerings um, we have internship fellowship and co-op opportunities. We have an online career center that I really think is underutilized by our SHIP members. Um, it's a great way to get in touch with our corporate partners, not only, um, in, not only through the career center, but it's in addition to what you're already doing through your university. So it's an additional touch point with our partners um, and they can see that you're really actively taking a proactive role in your career search. Um, we offer te uh, tips for resume writing and interviewing, career and professional development, access to all of our events and our leadership training, um, competition and award opportunities at our national uh, convention, and access to, I, I think this is really the best, is, is the SHIP Familia, access to a nationwide network of industry leaders and peers. You have a network of of leaders, no matter what the STEM industry is, um, whether it's in academia, or it's in the professional world that you can reach out to. And when you say that you're from SHIP and they're from SHIP as well, you will get a response. So I included this slide in here as well. Um, once this PowerPoint is loaded, you can click on this link. This is the page that we use to verify whether a STEM, whether your degree is STEM qualified. Because 
pursuit of a STEM degree is a requirement for all of our scholarships. And as education evolves, there has been the development of many, 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 many majors um, over time. And so we want to make sure that STEM, the degree that you're, you're pursuing is STEM qualified so that we um, can make sure that we're held accountable for, for all of our recipients pursuing STEM degrees. Now, that being said, if your degree is not listed um, in this link, you believe that your degree is a STEM degree. And what I would need you to do is to email us a copy of your degree requirements so that we can have it reviewed and approved uh, for it being considered a STEM degree. So this is not the be all end all list. But there is a process to follow should your degree not be listed in this link. So now we'll talk about the scholarship timeline. Um, this year, based on feedback that we've had from students and scholarship recipients, we've moved up the application timeline, um, which is good and bad in some ways. Um, so it's good in most every way. I'll start by saying that we are, are opening on February 1st and closing on April 30th. So we know that that means that the Close date happens before your semester quarter is over. Um, so that means you may be working extra hard during these few months, um, but it'll pay off because once you're on your summer break, you are on your summer break. Um, and then award notices will be mailed on July 1st. And so that way we can send, and this is the main reason why we've moved up our, our timeline here, is so that we can disperse fall awards um, on July 15th. Um, and so the review period will happen between April 30th and July 1st. Um, if you are selected, you will receive an online form to complete, which is due July 15th, and that's when um, scholarship award checks begin to be mailed out. Um, October 28th is our national convention this year in Denver, and I'll speak a little bit more about what how that is relevant to our scholarship recipients. Um, December 1st is when spring disbursement documents are due. That's if you are a recipient, uh, we do split up our awards into fall and spring disbursements. What that means is if your scholarship award is, let's say, $2,000, and you receive 1,000 in fall and 1,000 in spring. And so there are um, documents that we require, mostly a transcript uh, and a registration copy in order to send the spring disbursement. Uh, so once you send that over to us, we start, we start sending out um, your spring disbursements December 15th. So again, this is much earlier, um, by a few months than what we have done in the past. So if you are in communication with anybody who's applying to our scholarship program or who has applied to our scholarship programs in the past, please help us spread the word about this timeline because it's earlier than it has been in the past. And if folks are going to be applying based on what they've done in the past, they may miss this deadline and we don't want that to happen. So how and where to the, apply? I included the link here for our scholarship webpage. Um, do not um, be committed to what you see on that page now because that page is going to be updated tomorrow, Friday, and February 1st because we're uploading all the new information with the application link for 2020 and all of our scholarship offerings. Um, the applications will open February 1st. So that will be the application open date. So how to apply for scholarships. One, ensure that you meet the requirements and the requirements will be listed on our webpage. Two, make sure that your membership is activated. Three, take the time to gather your scholarship application materials. It's easier if you do this beforehand and have everything ready by the time you know by the time you're actually going to access the application um, it's a good thing to access the application to look you know be, become familiar with the site um, you the site that you apply to once the link is on our webpage um, 
is not actually our ship site. It is a platform called Smarter Select. You may have used it for other scholarships that you apply to with, the, you know, from either your school or other organizations. Um, and so you want to make sure that um, number one, your membership is activated and you're able to gain access to that site, and you know how to click around and access different things and see how you you are required to submit your application materials. So the application materials that are required include your name, your contact info, your demographic information, financial information, academic information, one letter of recommendation, a resume and professional headshot, essays, and links to exciting projects and or accomplishments. So now I'm going to dive a little deeper into each of these to let you know exactly what we're looking for. Um, for your name, please make sure that the name that you use is how it is listed on academic documents. It's really only used for our paperwork, so it's not, you know, it, I completely understand if you have an alias or um, an also known as name, um, or you go by a different name when you meet folks, um, but please, ensure that the name that you have on there is the way that it's listed on your academic document because that's what we need to match up and verify um, for our review process and also if you're selected when we uh, write your tax. Um, contact info, uh, please make sure it's an updated and professional email and phone number. Um, academic emails are, are A-OK, -okay. so if you use your university email, if you use a personal email, Please ensure um, it's professional. First name, initial, last name is good. Um, I understand that a lot of these emails are taken and you know people need to get creative, but please ensure it's professional. Um, and the address, if possible, please ensure that you have your mailing address because if you are selected for an award, that's our first address that we use. Um, or mailing your award. Um, if you don't know what that address is going to be, or it changes by the time you receive your award, no worries. You'll have an opportunity to update that. I understand that you know some folks have, you know, you may have your parents' home, um, your dorm address, and there's a lot of you know a lot of addresses involved. Use what you would like to be your mailing address as you know it at the time of application. For demographic information, we ask for your gender, ethnicity, um, and citizenship. The citizenship status is really um, just for those those applicate uh, those scholarship opportunities that require it. Um, but we, like I said, our ship funded scholarships don't require it. So don't think that answering this question is going to affect um, you your application. Um, review process at all because it's not. Um, and this information, we collect it and we gather it um, really to ensure that we uh, promote uh, representation, especially when it comes um, to gender, to make sure that all the folks out there um, that are underrepresented are get, getting access to these opportunities. Financial information, um, if you've filled out FAFSA, which I recommend that you fill it out, even if you know that you're not going to receive aid, please still fill out FAFSA um, because we will ask you for your EFC, um, the amount of people in your household, um, the total household income if you're still dependent on your parents, um, if it's required for you to include your parents' income in FAFSA, then do include it in your total household income. Um, and your employment status. Um, and really, this is for us um, to aggregate. It's not for analyzing it on an individual level, um, but really co collecting the financial need of our students, communicating that effectively um, with potential sponsors and donors as well. For employment, um, at in this section, um, the purpose of collecting the employment information isn't because it will um, affect your your application in any way, but we just we want to know how many of our applicants are working uh, because the data that other sources have show that members of the Hispanic and Latinx 
community um, many times work during their undergraduate um, and graduate careers. And so we want to be able to reflect the skills and abilities that um, our demographic brings to academic and professional communities. Academic information. Um, we ask for your university or institution uh, name, your GPA, and this is your overall cumulative GPA um, as it's listed on your transcript. Um, the most up-to-date is what we require. Your degree or major, your academic level. So if you're a undergraduate, if you're a graduating high school senior, if you're a graduate student um, or a PhD student, um, also if you're a professional but pursuing graduate school. Uh, we ask for that reason, we ask for your full-time versus part-time status. Uh, your high school name and city and state of your high school will also be asked. Um, your expected graduation date. And please note, your expected graduation date does not affect your, um, your scholarships, um, the review process at all. So you are not judged on your expected graduation date. We are trying to gauge how long it's taking our students to graduate and if students who are receiving scholarship um, is that is that length of graduation time um, being minimized or is it getting longer? We we want to get to know that information. So please um be as honest as you can with yourself with this um, expected graduation date um, and a transcript. For the purpose of your application, you may submit a unofficial transcript um, that is A-OK -okay for the review of your application, but please note that we will require an official transcript, a official transcript, once uh, you are selected for the scholarship before your scholarship award is dispersed. So please ensure um that you have that in mind uh but unofficial i know there's a cost for transcripts so unofficial transcripts are okay for the application period letters of recommendation you are required to provide one letter of recommendation um, please choose somebody who knows you um and can write to, to your skills and abilities and strengths um, in an eloquent way. So it, it doesn't matter how quote unquote important this person is, but it does matter that they have a personal relationship with you and they're invested enough in your success that they're gonna take the time to write you uh, a well-written letter. We require on about them their first and last name, their email address, phone number, title, and the organization that they work with. Um, so this could be a professional person um, that works in industry, or it could be an academic professor. And we will have a webinar um, in the coming weeks to, to walk you through this process, because especially if you haven't asked a professor um, for a letter of recommendation or a boss for a letter of recommendation in the past, we know it could be intimidating and we're gonna give you the steps and tools you need to confidently ask for that letter. Um, and I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that in a second. What I will let you know from the administrative side is that once you provide this information to us, our system will automatically send a request to their email. And they will submit the letter of recommendation online. So we don't accept letters of recommendation via mail, via email, via fax, any method other than through this online portal. So what that means is that after you request the letter of recommendation from them, then please reach out to them and make sure that they receive the link because um, especially with academic institutions and, and some of these engineering firms, their firewalls can be pretty tight. So when the email comes from our Smarter Select system, it may be um, blocked, sent to junk mail or whatever, you know, what have you. So please um, make sure that you check back with them after you enter their contact information to make sure that they received it. 
Another thing that I will say is try to give them as much time as possible. So you don't need to have completed your application to request a letter. And that's very important to know. Okay, your resume and professional headshot. Um, so we do ask for a professional resume in PDF format. Again, there will be another webinar and I highly recommend that you attend that one. Um, we'll go over how to write your resume. Um, we ask for a professional headshot. Um, please make sure it's a clear picture, that it's not your Insta selfie, um, that it's a .jpeg file. Um, I understand that some of the STEM industries are becoming a lot more casual, especially the tech industry and some computer science roles. So that's why I included this picture, which looks a lot more casual um, than what a, your traditional um, headshot would look like. That's okay. Um, just make sure that it, you know, your picture doesn't have profanity, that it's clear. Um, you know, something that you would use on LinkedIn, um, if you will, and we'll review, you know, the do's and don'ts of your of your headshot and your resume in the resume webinar. Last thing I'll say about the resume um, is that if you do have work experience, no matter what it is, please include it because our reviewers evaluate your application holistically, which means that we're not just looking for the transcript with the highest GPA. We see value in students that are well-rounded, that are participating um, in extracurricular activities that show leadership um, through different roles, uh, through student activities on campus, um, that have part-time jobs, um, no matter what they are, we, we acknowledge all of that. And so we want to ensure that all of that is captured in your resume. Okay, scholarship essays. We ask you to write quite a bit. Um, and by quite a bit, I mean that there are um, six different open-ended questions on our application. Um, do not be afraid because they are not super long, 250 words each. Um, and these are the questions here. Um, so the first one is summarize your life experiences and any challenges that have impacted your path to higher education. Second is discuss your educational and career aspirations as well as your ability to complete and achieve these goals. Third is please describe your interest in your intended major and how your interest in that field developed. Fourth, describe your volunteer or community experience with SHIP or other organizations and any internships you have held. Again, that's where we're capturing you as a holistic applicant and looking at you beyond just your academic performance. So these essays are very important. What are your career goals? That one's limited to 10 words because we literally want to know at this point in, not because you're tied to this career goal, but what is your vision for what your career is in this moment? And it can literally be one sentence, or it has to be one sentence because it's only 10 words. Um, and lastly, how will a SHIP scholarship impact your life and education? Um, the biggest thing that our sponsors are looking for is how they are impacting the community and so they want to know how is this going to impact you um, and I really uh, would highlight the essay portion because this really is where our reviewers get to know you personally um, as much as they can on a paper application so please 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 um, take the time write this out it's you know it's good if you separate these out and give yourself time don't you know trying to write this would be like 1200 words in one day is doable um, but you know probably you're gonna have mental exhaustion after the first two so try to separate these out as best you can um, so that you can you can write a great and compelling essay and again we're going to have a webinar in the coming weeks here um, to walk you through how to do that effectively.
Okay, lastly, there's an underutilized option in our application that allows you to highlight your projects and or accomplishments where you can upload links to videos, PDF files, research opportunities, photos of you stemming, um, whatever that means, whether in the classroom um, or you're part of a robotics club um, or you participate in a competition, volunteer opportunities. If you are out in the community serving in any capacity, whether it's STEM related or not, please take advantage of this because the essays and these links are really where our reviewers are going to be able to see you um, outside of what others have to say about you in the letter of recommendation, um, outside of your transcript and outside of your resume, right? This is your chance to personalize your application. Please take advantage of it. I included this picture because a couple of years ago, we had a student who had a 3D printed um, guitar and a video of them playing the guitar. And so that was really impressive for our reviewers. And so um, not to say that you have to 3D print a guitar and include a link on here, but we, all, we are all unique and we all have things that that um, highlight our individualism. And so this is your opportunity to highlight that. Okay. We're gonna work through this last bit here um, so that we can get uh, make sure that we end on time. Um, so the scholarship review process, um, from February to April, we're recruiting scholarship reviewers. Our scholarship reviewers are made up of professional um, SHIP members who are not applying to scholarships, which means they're not in graduate school, um, or if they are, they're not applying to our scholarships, um, and uh, working professionals from our industry partners. So um, a lot of our corporate sponsors provide scholarship reviewers that enjoy the review process and contributing to our program um, by providing the labor force that reviews all of the scholarships that, that we have. Um, in May to June is when scholarships are reviewed. They are blind scholarship reviews, which means um, they will not see your name um, or your headshot. Um, and that happens from May to June. Um, and then in July, reviews are collected and applications are ranked. So all of their um, all of their review scores are, and each piece of the application receives a score, are, sep, um, are submitted online anonymously, and then all of your scores are aggregated and the applicants are ranked for all of the different scholarships. Award notifications will be on July 1st. Make sure scholarships at ship.org is added to your email contact because that is who will send you the award notification and we want to ensure um, that it doesn't go to your spam or junk mail folder. Because if it does and you're unaware, it will not be until two weeks to a month when I don't hear from you, um, I'm gonna reach out via phone. So make sure that that is added to your email contact. Award disbursement. So once you receive your notification, hopefully you all will, um, there will be an online form for you to fill out. Um, and we it will include document verification. So we'll ask for a copy of your fall registration and your transcript to date. That is when you have to send us your official transcript a thank you letter to your sponsor um, for fall and for spring. So like I mentioned, your, your scholarship award is split into two, a disbursement in fall and a disbursement in spring. Um, and we require the verification documents again in December before we send your spring disbursement out. Your award will go directly to you and not to, the col um, not to your college or university. Uh, so that's very important to know. I know some scholarships send their uh, awards to a bursar's office or a cashier's office. We send it directly to you. And the checks are mailed via USPS. So that is AKA snail mail. Um, and they take three to five days for you to get them. And we email you as soon as those scholarship checks have been mailed.
Okay, so um, our scholarship awards go out and we have our recipients and all of our recipients are invited to attend the High Achievers Breakfast at the National Convention, which is a great event. Um, you receive a commemorative ship scholar pin at the event, a recognition certificate um, highlighted on ship so, uh, social media and a photo op with our ship CEO. Um, so we're very, very excited uh, when we see our ship scholars at the National Convention and having the pin on at the career fair at a national convention is a great way to visually distinguish yourself um, from all the other applicants that are during the career fair. So I highly recommend that you attend. And as I mentioned, that's happening October 28th in Denver, Colorado this year. Okay, so lastly, I wanna go over ways to give back. So once a ship scholar, always a ship scholar. Um, as you go on in your life, um, if you receive a, a scholarship through our program, um, please remember that you can give back. Um, you know, the clearest way is to make a donation um, to our Bright Mind Scholarship Campaign, which is our individual giving campaign. Any amount does help. Um, and we understand that you may still be students or, you know, as young professionals, maybe you're not at that point um, or you want to do more than, than donate to our individual giving campaign. You can become a scholarship reviewer upon graduation. So stay in touch with us. And when we reach out to ask you to be a reviewer, remember um, that there were for every scholarship application, there are three reviewers. So there were three people that took the time to read through your application. Um, when, when you applied and you can give back by becoming a reviewer as well. And uh, lastly, and I, I, I don't want to underestimate the power of this last one, is you can be a scholarship advocate. So as you graduate and you go out into um, the professional world, you can become an advocate for scholarships so that the amount of lives um, and awards that we give um, to to our scholar uh, to our ship members can increase year over year, and we can bridge the gap of underrepresentation sooner. Okay, so um, before I get to questions, I just wanted to highlight the information for the rest of our webinars. Uh, next one will be next week, February fifth, at five p.m. Pacific, eight p.m. Eastern. Ten tips to a resume that will get you noticed. Um, definitely, definitely worth doing. Um, another thing is you can kind of pace out putting your application materials together through this webinar series timeline. So, you know, bring um, your, if you have a working resume already, bring it to this workshop so you can write on it and edit it as the webinar is happening. Um, if you haven't started, don't worry. This is meant to start at ground zero. So if, if you haven't started, um, then we'll give you all the tools you need. But this works best when you start, um, when you take this information and you apply it right away. So if you if you could spend the weekend after this webinar putting your resume together, um, that's really how you're going to get the most out of this uh, webinar series because the information will be fresh in your mind. Okay, the next one will be on February 12th, again, same time, um, telling your story through a compelling essay. Um, if you're like me, writer's block is real, and sometimes talking about yourself can feel like more uh, more of a heavy lift and ask than, than writing a research paper. And so this webinar is going to walk you through how to authentically and effectively communicate your story through a compelling essay. So I mentioned we have four essays, they're 250 words each, that's not a lot of words. For some people, it's going to be that you can't get past 10, and for others, it's going to be you're at 1,000 and you don't know how to cut back. And this, this webinar is going to walk you through a framework that you can use um, to ensure that, that you can fit your story um, and, and tell it well in 250 words. And the last one is, wow, what a letter. 
And that one happens on February 19th, again, same time. Um, and our speaker is um, Dr. Kimberly Douglas Mankin, uh, who is who was, has actually been a professor um, for 20 years in an engineering school. And so she is going to give you the insider's perspective of how to ask for an effective letter um, and the do's and don'ts of how to approach um, faculty specifically when asking them for a letter of recommendation. And I do wanna emphasize that this webinar is last on purpose. Um, and that is because um, this, um, her recommendations for how to effectively ask for a letter of rec um, is works best when you already have your resume and your essays ready because you can share those with your recommenders. So to get the best, um, you know, the most, I should say, out of this webinar series, what I would recommend is that as the webinars are happening, you're working on those materials that um, are being presented on so that by the end of the webinar series, you're almost done with your application packet. Okay, so that wraps up the end of our webinar for today. Um, and I'm going to open the question box here. Okay, so Rita asked, how many applications are there usually? Thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands? Uh, we would love to have hundreds of thousands of applications because that would mean that we can request a lot more money um, from our sponsors. But we had over 2,000 applications last year and um, about 187 or 88 were awarded. So that's almost a one in 10 chance that your application, that if you submit an application, you will be awarded, which is really good. Um, let's see here. Uh, somebody asked how many winners there, there are. Last year was 187. This year we um, we estimate that we're going to have over 300. Web, uh, the PowerPoint of this seminar will be posted online on our website. And yes, there will be a webinar about essays. If I have any other questions, now is your time to ask. Okay. About, somebody posted that they can't hear. I want to make sure that everyone can hear me, and I hope there wasn't an an issue where folks didn't. Could someone confirm that you can hear me? Okay, your audio was better. Got it. Okay, um, so national convention. Let me go back to that slide. Here. Um, okay. If you have a specific question about the national convention, please submit it. Um, but the, the National Convention is October 28th. Information's online already, by the way. If you just Google SHIP National Convention 2020, um, our website will come up. Um, but National Convention happens October 28th. It's going to be in Denver, Colorado this year. We're really excited about it. And there is a special closed event, which means it's not open to all attendees, um, where all of our scholarship um, winners are invited and your seats are reserved so it's called the high achievers breakfast um and typically it's open um on a first come first serve basis to um to our attendees who have a 3.5 or above now if you're a scholarship recipient regardless of your gpa which many of our you know our scholarship recipients um the minimum gpa is 2.75 ship funded and a lot of our corporate sponsored ones are at 3.0 so no matter where you fall in that range um, you are invited and a seat is reserved for you so it is a great opportunity to network with corporate partners who are sitting at your tables um, to be, have a chance to hear from our ceo have that photo op um, and receive your commemorative pin that you can wear at the career fair Minimum GPA for graduate scholarships is 2.75. Recommender does not have to be a paid member. So your recommender can be whoever whoever you submit and from uh, whoever your your choice is. Um, we recommend having a professor um, or a professional supervisor as your recommender. 
but it, it can be whoever you like. You don't have to be members. Um, the range of scholarship, um, you you kind of nailed it there. It's $1,000 to $10,000, which is really a huge range. It's the first year this year that we're awarding $10,000 scholarships, and those are for our graduate students that are being sponsored by Intel. Um, so, and the undergraduate level 5,000 is is the highest the PowerPoint again will be posted on our web page uh, not sent via email so I have any other questions here I want to make sure that I answer everybody's questions before I sign off Nursing and pre-med are both considered STEM. Question was, is nursing or pre-med considered STEM? Yes, they both are. Awesome. So if there are no other questions, I will conclude the webinar now. Oh, here we go. One application per scholarship, or can I submit the same app? Oh, this is a very good question. Thank you for asking. So what we have is a common application for your basic information that's required for all scholarships. So that includes your name, your contact info, your demographic information, everything. Um, that, um, that is saved. So you don't have to resubmit for each application. But some of our corporate sponsors have additional questions that they, they ask. Um, and so you would just, if there is no additional uh, supplemental information required for that corporate scholarship, then you can just select that additional scholarship, review your information, and click submit. If they ask an additional essay question, you review the information you've already filled out, and then you would enter in your supplemental information. So if it's an additional essay or whatever it may be, and then you click submit. So that's how that works. Yes, architecture is a STEM degree. There's a question that just came in. Does SHIP consider architecture a STEM? Yes. Um, and going back, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth here. Um, but um, for the multiple scholarships, it's a very intuitive system. Um, so if you've, if you've used it before, you know it's pretty straightforward. But like I said, my email is on this last slide and you're more than welcome to ask me any questions um, or if you're having technical difficulties, I'm more than happy to get on a phone call with you to make sure that, that you, you can walk through the application. Question just came in, when can you start applying? Um, February 1st is when our applications open. Michelle from Accenture is on the line with us. Hi, Michelle. She's also a former SHIP employee and current friend. Thank you for joining. Is there an advantage with applying early? short answer is no your application is not reviewed earlier um, but the earlier you get started I promise you the better quality your application is going to be because you have more time to have it reviewed by more people um, so I highly recommend that you start early Any more questions here? We have one minute left. All right, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for joining. Like I said, we, had, we have over 2,000 applicants and we have 20 of you on the line, which means you're already ahead of so many more. So definitely please share this with your friends. Um, we do want to make sure that everyone has the same access to this information as possible and all of the information will be posted on our site. Thank you and have a great night. Bye-bye.